Hello there, this is Andrew Oates here from Expression College for Digital Arts, and uh, this is a small lecture called uh, Are Soft Bodies Dead? Uh, a couple of uh, years ago, with the advent of Maya and Enkla, uh, soft bodies um, might not be considered anymore. They were traditionally used to do exactly what Enkla does, simulate soft, deforming surfaces, and so the argument would be, are they still necessary? Well, they can do some pretty neat things. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of that right now. So I'm just going to make a grid and uh, pull it slightly off the uh, main grid so I can see it clearly. And then I'm going to make about a 30 by 30 division of it. <coughs> now to make a, a soft body, um, we take the original shape that we have and we're going to uh, make a copy of that shape, but it's going to remember the original shape as sort of a goal. And to do that, we go to the soft uh, rigid body menu, go create soft body. And then the standard option is just to make it soft. But we're going to make it soft and make it a goal as well. Uh, by making a new copy of the object and make retaining the original as a goal and hiding it with these two little um, check boxes, what we do is we hide the original shape, but Maya remembers where um, each vertice is on the original shape, and we can use that to retain some shape memory. So I'm just doing, going to do a create, and that makes a soft body. Uh, this often happens if you didn't delete the history. You may not have the, you may have the construction node still selected. So I'm going to delete the history and try again, and there we go. We got a nice soft body. And what happens with a soft body is that there is a particle connected to every vertice. And where the particles go, so does the vertices. So by working with particle collisions, uh, we can actually have this object form as if it was colliding with objects. Uh, the next step before we do that, though, is we have to add some springs to kind of tie the particles together so that they'll work like a cohesive object. And uh, to do that, we go down to create springs with the soft body object connect, uh, selected. Uh, by the way, the original object is still there, but it's hidden, so we don't see it. Still available in the outliner, though. So we're going to select the uh, copy plane, which is the soft body, and then go down to springs. There are several ways to make springs. Uh, the default is a min-max, but what you really want to use here is wireframe with a wire walk length of 2. What that will do is it will connect every edge, that is, every vertice is, is, that is within two edges of its neighbor. And the result of this is this nice little cross stitch here. Basically, we have springs that are connecting the sides of the boxes of the polygons. And then we have some that are connecting the corners as well. And this makes for a very nice material. So now we have to do a few tricks to get this to actually collide with an object. We're going to make a little sphere here. Just bring it up. And grow it a little like this. And I usually like to offset it just a little bit, um, even rotate it. Uh, one sensitive part about uh, particles and soft bodies is often if there's a pole involved where there's a lot of edges coming together, that can cause problems with the engine. So I kind of offset it just a little bit. And uh, naturally, if we're going to have the object uh, respond uh, as a rigid body in collisions, we need to make it so. And one little shortcut that we can use is we can just assign it a field, and then that's a shortcut to also make it a rigid body. So we're going to make it a rigid body, which is done. And then we're going to have the particles of the soft body collide with the rigid body. And therefore, the rigid body is going to deform the particles and deform the soft body. So to make a collision with particles, select the particles first. Shift select the sphere, go to particles, and do a make collide. Then we need to kind of open up our animation just a little bit. And we're going to run it. And right offhand, it's not going to work. We're going to be a little bit disappointed. Basically, the particles are, are slipping past the object. A couple of things we need to do to make this work. One is to select the rigid body itself and get it to respond to particle collisions. That's the simplest thing. So particle collisions on. So let's give it a go now. Still not going to be quite right. Let's run it, though. You can see that it responded in a big way. That's because, um, as you may have seen from previous examples, particles have a mass of 1. 
So basically when this ball, which also has a mass of 1, collides with them, the particles overpower it. So we need to make the mass a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make the mass about, oh, 20 or so. So it's 20 times heavier than a particle. So when it collides with the particles, it's not going to win. So that's pretty good. That's really nice. And so we've got a nice little bounce there. Occasionally, um, you may need to increase the stiffness of the springs to prevent the particles from uh, parting too much. But that works pretty good. Now there's all sorts of little tricks you can do with this material. And what I think that soft bodies are still particularly good for is simulating um, ground, either water or uh, trampolines, or something that is stationary and that you just need to deform in a certain way and you can get a really nice uh, look that way. Uh, for example, if we'd like to simulate water, we can actually take the soft bodies and decrease the goal weight. I'm going to decrease the goal weight to a very light number. And what that means is the particles are more free to uh, flow around and not return to their original goal position. So it makes the uh, surface a lot more flimsy. And I'm also going to go to the springs and increase their stiffness, which kind of uh, adds a more cohesiveness to the material. So something that has a lot of cohesion but is very flimsy, you know, very delicate, very flexible, and that would be water. So let's just do a quick simulation of this. And there we go. we kind of got waves going in and out. So we can simulate kind of a water falling on kind of a swimming pool or maybe a close-up of an ocean or a bathtub or lots of things. But it's a really nice way to do an effect, and there's even more you can do with it. Let's get rid of this rigid body here. And I'm just going to make another object over here. And this isn't even going to be a rigid body. This is just going to collide with the particles. So I'm just going to take a look at it from a side view. Just want to have it collide just a tiny bit. And we're going to keyframe that. So I'm just going to keyframe its translates like that. And I'm just going to swing this object across like this. And you could just hit S if you want to, but I'm used to just keyframing certain channels in this case. And so I'm just going to have the object move. I'm repositioning the uh, slider and uh, having it move across this object in about 120 frames. Let's just do a quick playback of that. That's really nice. So what I'd like to do is have the particles of this soft body collide with this new object and let's see what we get. So particles make collide and run the uh, animation back again. So we can make some really nice ripples as if this object was a very fast moving object, a boat of a sort, and it's kind of making a wake behind it. Very difficult to do in many different other ways, and that's just an easy way to accomplish it. So, soft body is dead? Maybe not. There's certainly a lot of things you can do with them.